Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you who've been following my channel, you know that I have been uh, working on putting together this 210 gallon aquarium behind me here. And uh, it's quite, uh, quite a project. And anything really over 150, over 150 gallons, I do recommend a sump. I thought I'd go ahead and go over with you just some of the basics of a sump because the truth is, is that when you understand it, it's actually very, very simple. And yet, and yet some people will find a sump somewhat intimidating and, um, and be very back off, you know, they, they, they back off from even wanting to consider one, even in some cases with the very large tanks. And the truth is a sump is, uh, is a very, very um, simple system. And uh, as part of my uh, fish keeping made simple, uh, I'm, this is the, uh, the episode episode number two, and this is on sump filtration. If you're new to the channel, uh, consider hitting that uh, bell and, that, uh, and uh, subscribing, and that will keep the channel growing, and also uh, encourage YouTube to uh, share the channel with other fish keepers. And that's always a good thing. The target is uh, 40,000 subscribers. It looks like we're, we're, uh, we're right on target for that. Let's talk about a sump. I mean, a sump, imagine, here's the easiest way to imagine a sump. Imagine just taking a, um, a hang on back filter, but instead of having it on the back of the aquarium, put it underneath the aquarium. Instead of having a down tube that is sucking and then a pump putting the water back in, Instead, what you have is the water is being pulled down with gravity down into the sump and a pump is returning the water to the tank. It's really that, that simple. And in between those two steps, you're running that water from the tank through media and then pumping it back up. Like all filtration, you're taking unfiltered water, doing something to it, filtering it, right, and then returning it to the tank. Whether it's a sponge, filter, a hang-on bag, a canister, uh, you know, one of these inside hanging expert matic types or, or a sump. Same principle. You're running water through something and then back up to the tank. In the case of my sump, uh, what I did was a DIY, a do-it-yourself sump, where I used very stiff material. This is some very stiff uh, filtration material. I mean, it's, you can't even really, it's really hard to bend actually. I could put my knee in it and bend it and probably break it. But um, I'm using this material as a wall. And so I've created a, a three part partition wall in the sump. And uh, this three part partition is uh, the water dumps into the sump and first goes through some, some filter socks. These are, these socks are four inches across and uh, they're 14 inches long. And there's two of them, two of them underneath the aquarium. So the water goes into here, this is like a 200 micron. So it, it's not gonna let any, anything really get through, anything of any significance. So it, it, it does a really good job in uh, pre-filtering the water. Then the water runs into the wall of sponges and, um, and more waste is pulled out of it. But more importantly, in the case of my sponges, nutrients, from the clean water. The water that was cleaned by the is now going to provide nutrients to the beneficial bacteria that's living in that wall of sponges. Two walls from bulk reef supply of, of stiff filtration material and one four inch sponge that I picked up. It's called a pour it, I believe it's called a pour it sponge from Swiss Tropicals. Now that middle sponge will definitely be a great home because it provides a tremendous amount of surface area for beneficial bacteria. I am using this very deep four inch, four inch, uh, in some cases, five inch substrate made up of a ra primarily aragonite, about 95% aragonite and a little bit of black sand. Uh, I'm using this as the primary home for beneficial bacteria. That, however, can take a while to establish itself. And so I will be bringing over beneficial bacteria from, from the tanks that are here on my left 
these tanks have in them uh, filters, a marine land filter, and several of those hang on the side filters. And I'm going to be pulling all of that, all that filter media from inside the the marine land and also the, the sponges, the three sets of sponges inside each of those hang on filters. All that's going to be pulled out and dumped in the sump. So the sump is going to get a big infusion of beneficial bacteria when I dump all of that, all of that media into the sump. And I'm also going to be uh, treating the tank with some of this. It's called Fritzzyme 7. It's a, just a very, very uh, potent uh, live nit nitrifying bacteria blend that has worked for me in the past. So, sumps in their absolute simplicity, water is siphoned down to them, a pump takes the water back up. If you have the sump set up correctly, and by that what I mean is if you turn the pump off, the water level in the sump will not overflow, will not actually exceed the top rim. That means that you have the right amount of water at work. I could conceivably fill up my sump with water right now, and the pump would keep pumping it, would keep pumping away, and, and I just have a full sump. But if the pump were to shut off, if we were to have a power outage, uh, a blackout of some sort, or if the pump were to fail, the, uh, the sump would actually overfill. It would actually overflow. But because I have the right amount of water in the system, I did a shutoff test and I ended up with about five inches of margin, of safety margin, between the top level of the water and the top of the tank. So it's one of the scariest things to do is a, um, a power outage test on a new sump to make sure that the sump isn't going to overflow in the event of a pump no longer working or in the event of a full blown out power outage. Let's go ahead and do that test now and see what happens. Water will continue to fill up the sump until it gets to the bottom of the intakes of the Synergy overflow box, or what they call the gyre. As you can see, it's already, already stopped running. So I have about, I would say five inches, five inches of room there's no flood concern in my mind. Now, what about a back siphon? Can you get a back siphon from a sump? Yes, uh, your return hose, when the pump stops, can actually start to siphon water backwards. And this is why you put a one-way valve on the return line. Another trick and another tip is you can drill a hole in the return just below the water line. Right, you have that 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 U-shaped return. You can drill a hole just below the water line, a small hole. It doesn't have to be a big hole. As a matter of fact, don't make it a big hole because it'll squirt everywhere. Make it a very small hole, enough to get air in there. And the event that that a back siphon does start and your one-way valve is defective and letting water get through, the siphon will be broken by that by the air that comes in through the hole. So there's nothing to worry about really. If you have it set up correctly, nothing to worry about on flooding. Big advantages of a sump, lots of room to play with, right? I mean, this is a lot smaller than the sponges that are actually in the sump. <laughs> there's three of these and one of them is four inches thick and uh, that's a tremendous amount of surface area. There's also open space that I can do things with. I also have the two socks which work as as 200 micron pre-filters. And I have a compartment where I can put a heater separate from the pump compartment. You never want to put the heater in the pump compartment because if the pump, if for some reason your tank becomes blocked and your pump compartment empties out, you're gonna have a heater blow up on you because it's not gonna have any water. So uh, 
I have room in there for a heater, so I don't have to have a heater inside of my tank. And so it's a lot, it's a lot cleaner look when you, have, when you have a sump. The other advantage of a sump, of course, is the added water volume. You've heard the saying, the solution to pollution is dilution. And so uh, with a sump, you do get that. You do get uh, more dilution because you're getting, you're getting more water volume. So um, I love a sump. They're easy to work with, easy to reach in, grab and change things around. And uh, they're quiet when they're set up correctly, especially with what's called a bean animal. This has a bean animal, has three, has a primary, uh, a primary, uh, a secondary, and a overflow or emergency drain. So again, almost impossible to block the drain on this thing. So not even a concern really. So uh, a bean animal is a very quiet, quiet system considered the gold standard in the, uh, you know, among people who have sumps. The emergency overflow outlet is in the middle of the sump and it would make a loud splashing noise if something was wrong. And uh, that's to alert you that something is wrong. This is, this is dr drilled. You can also uh, get sumps installed that, uh, that use overflow boxes like this ESOP system. And, uh, and then the overflow box does essentially what the drilled, the, the, what the drilled overflow, overflow box would be doing. So uh, at any rate, I'm a big, uh, big advocate of sumps. I like sumps a lot. Certainly anything over 150 gallons uh, you should seriously consider a sump. A lot of water movement. It gives you a, uh, you can, it's a place you can put a, a, give a fish a time out. It's a place where you can put plants. If you have fish that are not good with plants, like, like I do, you can put, you know, you can put some plants down there and they can grow in the sump with a, with a full spectrum light. So it gives you a lot of, a lot of different angles that you can play around with. And certainly if you have any questions about a sump, ask them in the comments below. And if you have experience with sumps and, and, and uh, maybe I missed going over one of the advantages of having a sump, also comment below because we all learn from each other around here. All right, so that's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. That's 9 a.m. Pacific or noon Eastern. And check us out on Facebook, Ben O apostrophe Cichlid. It's a great Facebook group, uh, has the name Cichlid in the name, but all types of fish keepers go there. And uh, for some behind, behind the scenes, a look at things that are normally not posted elsewhere, come on over to ben.o.cichlid on Instagram. Okay, that's it for me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.